So, Golnisa, so tell us about Suizo and the Summer Institute here at, in, at Indiana University and, and what you do each year as you teach Uyghur. Um, here at Indiana University, we have a great summer course. It's a very intensive course, eight weeks course. And during this time, we cover the whole program of the year, the academic year. So it's, um, we teach here, we offer, usually we offer two courses, introductory and intermediate, but this year we provided only intermediate Uyghur. So during the summer, we have a lot of students <coughs> who come from other states because uh, Indian University is a unique place to, to study Uyghur. Not like many universities uh, teach Uyghur in the United States. So students have great opportunity to study Uyghur during the summer here, if they are busy during the academic year. Yes. Rahmanjan, every summer you teach these classes in the Dari language in Suizo here at Indiana University. What do you accomplish in your Dari classes? Uh, in Dari classes, uh, usually uh, we, we teach the Salkar material, uh, the great material that's uh, published in Salkar and developed by Salkar. And uh, uh, usually the, at the end of the cl uh, class, the students who are coming from the introductory level, uh, based on the Act for an ILR uh, uh, criteria, if you see, at the end of the intermediate class, uh, there are two or two plus, and close to three. So those are the accomplished, like the students' uh, proficiency level and uh, achievement levels very high. Oh, I'm so happy that here we, ha we can, we have a chance to produce our own materials. I remember when I came here in 2005, uh, there was a lack of teaching materials. And every day for each class, I prepared handouts. And now there is almost no need for handouts because we put in the textbook, we put all the materials. We have video, we have audio, we have a lot of pictures. And uh, this is, our textbook is very rich with cultural information. So I think students, they like it. And one of my students, he, this summer, he said that uh, he liked the idea of the intermediate textbook because it's designed as a virtual trip to Xinjiang. And wow. in, uh, in that textbook, we have our main character, uh, John, who is traveling to Xinjiang. And it's very hard to get Xinjiang directly. It's, it's impossible. So students, they need to go to Beijing and then to Xinjiang or Shanghai and Xinjiang. So when they are in Beijing, they have virtual trip in Beijing, you know, in for the Forbidden City, Great Wall, and we provide all this information in our textbook, and then we move to Xinjiang. And students, they like, they like this idea a lot. The interesting uh, experience they learn, uh, the students they learn, what was the Afghan culture. It's more community culture, and uh, uh, they learn uh, that Afghans are not the way they see and hear in the, in the media. Afghans, they have, they're more hospitable people, they're more respectful and uh, very calm people. And uh, so they liked really the culture in Afghanistan and the hospitality, especially. And uh, one, uh, like, uh, an interesting uh, memory, uh, I would say, it was one of the culture part we were uh, working in the class, a cultural activity. Uh, when you have a guest, you several times you uh, insist the guest to eat. So that was like funny for them. They say, why they're insisting? <laughs> the, and it was like part, part of the culture. They're very polite. They want, they like their, uh, their uh, they respect uh, their uh, guests, so they want their, their guests to eat more. It doesn't mean like they're insisting and they disrespect their uh, guests. Uh, I had two students, and one of them uh, was a Chinese student, and he studied introductory Uyghur here. But the second one, he didn't study introductory Uyghur. However, he has um, really good language background. He studied um, introductory Uzbek, and he studied Arabic and Persian. So it was not difficult for him to take intermediate course. And is it so, normal for uh, students to be able to bridge from another language like that to Uyghur? Or is this something that he did successfully that most students cannot do? No, 
they can do it if they are familiar with Arabic script and if they studied one of the Turkic languages and if they are very good, talented students. Because before, they, before we take them, we have pre-test exam and I tested him and he was great. Yeah, before we take the students, we take oral exam. Besides oral, we also take a written part of the exam. We need to see how he can write in Arabic script. Okay, we provide some uh, reading comprehension also uh, test. And we provide some passages, they read and they answer the questions and also listen. This was the second time that I uh, taught for the SUSEL. I also had uh, taught the introductory class for the last summer. And um, yes, it was a good class, especially, I guess, uh, from the point of view that uh, this was my second experience. So it was a little bit better than the last summer. And uh, I expanded especially some of the curriculum, some more than the last summer and we covered some more subjects, especially the grammatical points. So um, I'm pretty much hopeful if the students want to uh, continue their studies in Dari, so if, you, if they go to intermediate classes. So um, can you give me an example of an exercise in a class that you would do that you found effective? Uh, well, inside the classroom, uh, we did actually, we tried different kind of exercises, but there was one which, uh, I developed it together with the students. It was somehow uh, like kind of a multi-skill exercise. Uh, we had, um, I put some uh, pieces of paper which uh, had some information on it. And then we put these uh, pieces of paper around the room on the walls. And then everybody had to read them and get the points because each of these students had like two or three questions and they had to look for the answers throughout the room. So it was a reading comprehension for that point and then they had to write their answers on the board and also on the piece of paper. So they had a good like kind of uh, a writing practice. And then after that they had to read their own part. So everybody reads their own part and then the body of the story get slowly built up. So everybody has to say that story again from the beginning till the end. So they are also, they speak, you can get, you can catch some pronunciation errors, the reading errors, the comprehension, writing, like kind of everything could be evaluated and they can practice everything. So they really enjoyed that. And especially, although it is kind of a time consuming exercise, but they really enjoyed that. So we that like every two weeks we did one of that. And, and they, when you say writing, they were actually writing in Dari script. Yeah, yeah, everything is in Dari. Mm -hmm. So the best part about that exercise is even though it's like second week of the introductory class, so everything happens in the target language. Everything is in Dari because they write in Dari, they read the Dari text, even though they are simple sentences, but nobody needs any English because everybody has to write and read and then speak again in Dari. As you developed these textbooks, uh, what section, what topic was your most interesting topic to you as you were working on it for the textbook? You know, we have a chapter related to, um, we, we, we called it the language of food in Xinjiang. Mm -hmm. it's, um, this is a great topic. I really enjoyed it because here we provide a lot of Chinese words. So when uh, Uyghur is one of the Turkic languages and we share a lot of common uh, words with other Turkic languages. But in Uyghur we have uh, a lot of Chinese words and if student who studied Uzbek before and didn't study Chinese or um, who didn't go to Xinjiang before, it, probably it will be hard for them. But here in that chapter, we use uh, a lot of Chinese. We explain them in which part of Uyghur vocabulary you can uh, meet Chinese words and how to deal with them. How can you recognize Chinese words? How can you distinguish them from Uyghur? We have some activities like this. We have some video with uh, native Uyghurs who speaks Uyghur, but they use a lot of Chinese words in their uh, speech. So I think it's a good, very good exercise. Uh, Dari students right now, uh, they they learn a lot about the language and culture, and also uh, there was a lot of recruitment for the for the jobs for Dari and for Afghan languages. 
So they're very excited that most of them they are they were recruited to the jobs mm. for the for those languages inside the state and outside the state. So that was a very great part of this class, and they were very uh, excited about that. So I would say their language is on demand. So there's a lot of job opportunities for them. And most of my students, they graduate from Dari class. They have their jobs in that field. So that would be an, a, a future for them if they That's learn great. this language. That's fantastic. Good opportunity to come yeah. to Indiana University. Oh.